So you guys might be wondering, Aero, what are you doing sitting in your car when you're about to show us a polymer clay tutorial? Well, um, I'm sitting outside on this gloomy day in Texas in front of a local coffee shop because once I finished the cash register, which I'm about to show you, I realized I didn't have any other ideas for what to put on the counter. So I am at Iris Bagel and Coffee Shop, which is a wonderful shop owned by a really awesome family here in Arlington. So um, I didn't want to go to like a Starbucks. I mean, every single Starbucks looks exactly the same on the inside. And also I like to support local businesses. So I definitely want to go in there. I'm going to get some coffee and some breakfast. So while you guys watch the tutorial, I'm going to go get some ideas and I will let you know what I've come up with at the end of the video. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I'll leave a little reminder here that I'm not super great at polymer clay. I know there are a lot of other channels that are better at it than I am. So as always, if you have any suggestions for things that I can change or I can do better, please leave them in the comments below. But I really hope you guys enjoy this little creation of the abandoned coffee shop cash register. Abandoned shop cat. The abandoned coffee shop cash register. Abandoned coffee shop cash register. Can you say that three times fast? And now there's a guy looking at me. This is why I'm not a vlogger. <laughs> So as you can see in my project, I have this entire counter that has nothing on it. And if you're new to the abandoned coffee shop, I will put a link in the iCard so you can check out the entire playlist. But we need to get some stuff on here and the thing I'm starting with today is obviously the cash register. That's going to be the biggest item on the counter. So I'm getting out all of my polymer clay stuff because I think that's going to be what is the easiest to manipulate and get into a shape that I like. I looked up a sample photo and I'll put that on screen now. It is a 1980s, 1970s cash register and it's really interesting because it looks like there is a cash drawer underneath and then the machine sits on top. So I'm going to start by making the cash drawer. To do this I started out with some gray mixed with black. I didn't want to make it jet black but just a darker gray color. I put it through my clay roller machine on the thickest setting and now I'm just doubling up that thickness to make the body of the drawer. So you can see on the side you can still see the seams between the two layers so I'm just taking a sculpting tool and trying to blend those in. I'm trying to keep it very square as this is supposed to be like a metal box. Now on the thinnest setting I rolled out some black and this is going to become my drawer front for the cash box. And I did think about having the drawer open but I don't want it to look like the coffee shop was looted because it wasn't. So now that I have the drawer front I need to make the little locking mechanism and I have a die that goes to an extruder machine but since all I need is just one little circle I'm just going to push it through with my thumb and then take my exacto knife and cut off a sliver to make like a little round piece. Because this is supposed to look like it can have a key go into it I'm going to use my exacto knife to make a little cut in the front and I'm also going to poke all the way through to the dark gray and it kind of attaches all the clay together. And finally for this portion of the register I'm going to take some light gray that matches the key whole thing on the front and I'm going to cut some little squares and these are just going to be some feet on the bottom of the cash box and the reason I'm doing this is just going to lift it up off the desk a little bit. I might want to shove some papers underneath there. It looks like they were kind of hiding stuff under there. But then after that's done I'm going to bake it according to the package instructions. Now for the rest of it, I want to make this very 70s looking yellow and so I mixed some light brown, yellow, and white and this is what I got and I think it's pretty accurate to the picture. I rolled out this yellow color clay on the thickest setting again and I'm going to end up folding this into thirds and then I'm also checking with my cash box that it's not bigger than the base it needs to sit on. So I'm going to fold this into thirds to make it triple thick, 
but in the end I um, will take off that top layer because I do feel like it ends up a little bit too thick. So just kind of make sure you're going back and forth and checking to make sure it is the size you want it to be. So there you can see I took off that top layer, it's in my hand, and I'm going to use that to fold over. And this is going to make the upright back part of the cash register. So I'm just cutting off the top so that it is square. And because there are a lot of right angles and flat sides, anytime I do make a new piece, I wanna cut off the edges to make sure that they are staying as flat as possible. So once I have that fairly attached to the back, um, um, I have to do the next step, whatever that is. Oh yeah, so now I'm gonna make the side of the cash register, which is the part where the keys go. And again, I am flattening one side so that it has a slope, and then I'm going to take my blade and then cut the sides flat. It's very important to keep doing that. And you will see that my cash register does get a little bit warped and it doesn't stay completely 90 degrees. I'm okay with that, but Probably if this was going to be in a brand new perfect shop, I would probably do it over again, but for my coffee shop, it's fine. And then I wanted to raise up the back of the cash register a little bit, so I put an extra length of clay on top and then just blended it in. Now I am going to bake this piece before I add any more details, so I'm taking my rubbing alcohol and any nail marks, fingerprints, dust that's gotten into the clay, I'm going to use that to um, get those off and then it also kind of flattens it out just a little bit, not enough to rely on it, but um, it does help a little bit. And then I baked that according to package instructions so that I had a solid piece to start adding details to. One other thing I can do to try and keep my uh, the faces of my piece as flat as possible is take some sandpaper and I'm just going to try and sand down each side. You can sand polymer clay and I'm just taking a pretty small grit of sandpaper to do this. I don't want to use a really rough grit because it will tear into the clay, but this does help me get more of a flat finish. Now on the side that we made for the keys to go on, I do wanna put a black base before I add the keys because the keys are also yellow, so I need something underneath to help them stand out. I'm just making sure that that piece fits, but because the bottom piece is baked and the black piece I just cut is not baked, I am going to add some liquid polymer clay to kind of act like the glue to make sure that this piece sticks once it's baked on. I'm also going to add a black piece to the back of the cash register to act as the screen. And then I'm gonna add one more black piece and it's gonna go down on the other side. This is going to be underneath where the credit card scanner is. And that part gets a little bit confusing. I'm not even sure I did it right. From the picture, I'm just trying to make it look as accurate as possible. Now I'm also adding feet to the bottom of the cash register machine itself because I do want a little edge or a little, um, I'm trying to say gap between the bottom of the machine and the cash box. So I went ahead and baked again. You may not need to bake as many times as I did, but I see it as saving my work and knowing that I'm not gonna mess it up or put a fingernail <laughs> through some unbaked clay. So anytime I felt like I needed to, I just went ahead and baked the clay. So now I'm working on the little credit card scanner thing that's on one side. And all I did was look really closely at the picture and try to match how it looked. If any of you have actually used a 1980s cash register, you might be able to tell me that I got it wrong, but I did try really hard to make it look like the picture. Here I'm just adding a piece on the top to kind of cover up all the edges. And um, honestly, this cash register is probably gonna get covered up with a lot of leaves and paper anyway. So I'm just trying to get the feeling of the cash register. It does not have to be perfect. So now I'm gonna start working on the keys. So I'm taking some very thin slices of this yellow and this was rolled out on my thinnest setting again. 
and I'm making some long strips. I'm going to end up cutting the keys from those strips. I'm adding a pretty thick layer of the liquid clay because I do want these keys to be really stuck and I also want them to kind of sink down into the liquid clay. So that's why I'm adding a thicker layer. It also helps me be able to move them around a little bit. I'm starting with the long keys. If I look at my sample, it has some longer keys and some shorter keys, and I'm not trying to match my sample exactly. Like I said, I'm just trying to get the feeling of a cash register because a lot of these details will be covered up by muck and leaves and paper and just building trash that's fallen around. So I'm kind of, kind of a fake it till you make it type of situation with this. The key with making these look somewhat realistic is trying to stick to an invisible grid. If you were trying to make something look perfect, I'd probably draw the grid on first and then try to add the keys, but I'm just kind of eyeing it. I'm cutting keys as I go, trying to keep them similar in shape. Not all of them end up the same size, but like I said, it's, a lot of it's going to be covered up and keys, especially in old machines, often end up kind of you know jagged and out of place anyway so it's all good <laughs> now to attach the cash register machine to the cash box I'm just gonna go ahead and put some super glue on the bottom of the feet and then make sure I line it up on top how I like it all the rest of the details from here on out are going to be added with paint. This is my little silicone paint mat made by Stuart Dollhouse Creations and I like it because it helps me conserve paint because the little grooves are so tiny they just take like a dot of paint and when you're working on a miniature that's really all you need. I'm also going to be using these little micro brushes. You can actually find these anywhere that does railroad type hobby. They're super tiny and really great at working on miniatures. I also will use a actual paintbrush because they do have a hard time making a sharp point because it's just like a little piece of fuzz on the end of the brush. So I kind of go back and forth between using a micro brush and using an actual paintbrush. What I'm gonna do is take different colors and just color some of the keys. If you've ever seen like a McDonald's cash register, a lot of times they're color coded however that business needs it to be color coded. And so I'm not really trying to be specific about any of the colors and where they're at. I do leave the bottom left corner all yellow because those should probably be number keys. I'm also going to be painting some white rectangles here and there to kind of emulate stickers because many times these machines have little information stickers on them. And I added a little line of green to the screen to make it look like there's just like a little bit of writing on the screen and usually that would be done with like a green color. Now in this very open spot at the bottom, if you look at my reference picture that I put up earlier, it has this little like indention that would be very hard for me to get with polymer clay and make it like stand out. So what I ended up doing is painting a rectangle and then I dabbed some off with a paper towel and it makes it look like a bunch of grime has built up in a very, very shallow area. Now I'm going to be using some polycrylic to seal the entire thing. This has a, I think it's semi-gloss, I can't remember which one it is, but it does give it a glossy effect, especially because this is supposed to be a plastic and metal miniature, it does give it that shine that it needs. Of course I'm going to be aging it after this dries, so it will dull it back down, but uh, a lot of times miniatures is about getting that texture. So once the polycrylic is dry, of course, I'm going to need to age it so that it works in my project. If you are looking to try this out, of course, you can skip this step if you're wanting more of a cleaner look. But if you've been part of my channel at all, you know that I age pretty much everything. I'm using some watered down black paint to start to get into all the cracks. And then I'm going to be using some watered down white paint to make it look like water damage or damage from birds, stuff falling from the sky, you never know. 
If you do make a cash register similar to this, please let me know on Instagram. You can tag me at Bentley House Minis. I always love seeing what you guys create. And I especially love seeing when you guys create things that look new because they obviously look way different to what I make. And um, that's just really cool for me to see. That's why I try and show you how to make it look newish from the beginning and then I age it at the end. So here's how it looks sitting inside the abandoned coffee shop. As you can see, it looks super lonely on the countertop. And also, I haven't aged it onto the countertop yet. Once I kind of figure out where I want it to sit permanently, I will put some water damage underneath the cash drawer so that it looks like it's been sitting there for years. Right now, it looks like someone just sat it there yesterday. Now storming like crazy. Well, it's not, it's raining. I don't even know if you can hear me. But the uh, breakfast was good. I put a few scenes in from um, me eating breakfast. It was very delicious. I had a south, south side flamethrower. It was delicious. It was jalapeno and Swiss cheese and mm, it was so good. And a chai tea latte. But I just sat in there and kind of soaked in the atmosphere and actually it's kind of nice that it's a gloomy day because it was like nice and dark which is the atmosphere of my abandoned coffee shop even though the family is lovely and it was a very happy cheery atmosphere on the inside they even had like a little lamp if you want to like read so that was really cute i am going to just kind of put here my list that i made of things that i found in the coffee shop if um, you end up going to a local coffee shop and you see anything else that you see in the counter or the walls that you think, hey, Ara may want to know about this or make something like this, just put it in the comments below. I would love to see. I hope you guys really enjoyed the cash register tutorial. I hope you can hear me now over the crazy amounts of rain that's happening. And the rain is stopping now. Nope. No, it's not. Never mind. I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Cheer it up.